up, nerds and nerdettes, and we little nerdlings all. It's your buddy, Big John and G, the two gun fix it presents Legendary Gaming. It's Monday, and we get another Midday Monologue Monday. So you know I drop a video every day of the week, but, but today on Mondays, I like to talk about things with you. And what I'm talking about today, yeah. I think we can yeah. actually yeah. call it a little bit yeah. of fan yeah. fiction, or fan casting, maybe a little bit more accurate. So the teaming up of two different IPs has always been a huge success. Well, almost always has been a huge success. And I think that overall it will continue to be a successful uh, genre or maybe a subgenre. I'm not even sure what you would call it, teaming up of different and sometimes maybe even opposing IPs. <laughs> but I have some interesting ideas, actually one that I really want to run with. So why don't you join me down the table and we'll talk about fanfic gaming. <laughs> Now, I'm not the biggest fan of, uh, well, fanfic. Individuals can go crazy what they do to a story, sometimes destroying the exact seed that makes that story, movie, or series exactly what it is, just to fit something that they personally want in the story. That's all right. That's all right, but I'm not a fan of it. That's okay. Keep doing it. I'm not going to stop you. But along those lines, I am kind of fanficking something here, so I'm annoying myself a little bit. <laughs> And it's all based on one question. Why? Why does it seem that over the years, the only company that's been able to acquire both the Marvel and the DC IP at the same time is WizKids? Has anyone else done it? What if I miss? If I miss something, I'm not, I want to know, because I'm not sitting here telling you that's the God's honest truth. That's, that's what I've come to realize. So please, if I'm wrong, I want to know. But it seems that WizKids, right? Uh, especially with the hero clicks. They have Marvel DC clicks, and uh, you can interact with them. Now, I haven't hero clicked since the early 2000s. But from what I remember, the Marvel and DC, even though they had both properties, weren't really compatible. The DC compared to the Marvel was way OP, and it didn't work very well combining the two of them, at least, again, in the early 2000s, the way I remember it. But now, now, we have the chance to see something truly magnificent, if you ask me, in my opinion. If Fantasy Flight Games was able to acquire the rights to Warner Brothers DC comic book uh, line of, of heroes and villains in order to make games out of them, that would be the most amazing thing. That The only thing that would be more amazing than that would be if Disney bought Warner Brothers. But until that day comes, I think as far as gaming goes anyway, the best thing that we can hope for if we ever want to see these two franchises brought in a way, especially in a way that we the fans can control the action, would be if Fantasy Flight Games gets the rights to and does a DC Champions the card game. And then we could see some really interesting crossovers. I think we could see exactly the same thing as far as publishing and marketing goes that they're doing with uh with marvel that they could do with dc a big box followed by some hero packs scenario packs an expansion box and then over again with the heroes the scenario the expansion box it works well it's a good pattern that they have for marvel champions and it can be very easily just as successful for a DC Champions game, whether they call it that or not, but using the same mechanic as the core game of the Marvel, 
uh, is what's important here because that will give the ability to cross things over. And obviously their core box is going to have to start with the Justice League. Obviously. I mean, where else are you going to start? And therefore, we're going to have to look at what the team, what the first five core cards are going to be as far as the heroes go in the box. And my guess would be obviously the big ones, right? You know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Cyborg. And from there, they would have, if it follows suit, they would have three encounter decks, three villain decks. What would be better than the Joker to start with? That could be very fun. And in all honesty, outside of being a Batman villain, he is kind of a low-level villain. I mean, with a lot of planning, maybe he can put up a fight against Flash or Superman, but come on. He's a low-level villain to most other superheroes. Now, from there, the Legion of Doom. Get a good team in. Team versus team. Uh, expectations of a great battle going on. And then for the third, the big fight, someone like Ares or maybe Steppenwolf would be good. I don't want to jump right into Darkseid because I feel like he should have his own expansion box. And I'm just talking about the core stuff here. But of course, this subject came up ultimately because I'm talking about a crossover. And that would be fantastic. Not not a scenario pack. I guess they kind of could do it in a scenario pack, but no, it feels like a crossover expansion box is what they would need to do. Maybe a big box. I mean, that would be fantastic. And although it's a big box, it would cost more. I really feel like, like everyone that's playing this game, Marvel Champions, and will play the DC Champions, I, I really feel like enough of them would buy it that I feel comfortable saying, yeah, they're all going to buy it. Everyone. Everyone that bought one of those boxes is going to buy the crossover box. And it may also cause some people that only have Marvel or DC to then buy the other one. But why has this not happened yet? Why is it seen that, that most companies that do acquire one of the IPs, Marvel or DC, never really get to acquire the other one? And so far, the one big one that did, WizKids, has... It seems like it's done minimal to promote the crossover of the game, in the game, of the heroes from the two different companies. So, I think right now, Fantasy Flight Games is in the best position possible in order to do this. I don't know how much it costs. Obviously, that's probably the biggest problem, is how much is it going to cost? What's the scratch involved in uh, getting the rights to, uh, to to the DC library to do a, a card game or any kind of board game. But outside of whatever the cost is, just do it! FFG, just do it! I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to have a financial hit on your hands. And also, how come no one in your think tank has, ta has thought about this? You need to hire someone that thinks of these things, obviously. Jeez. Uh, hey, I'm willing. Send me a note. I'll work for you as a think tank guy. You need someone, because you're dropping the ball now. Really, you haven't thought of this? You haven't done this? <laughs> what do you guys think? What? Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be about this Marvel DC with FFG, but what crossovers would you like to see in, in board games, card games, dice games that you play? Uh, how would you like to see it work out between a crossover? I'm really interested in this idea of crossing over the, the concepts now because of the Marvel DC thought I had for FFG. I just want to see this all over the place. <laughs> what do you think? Is there anything that maybe you thought of in the past? Or maybe this video uh, planted a seed that made you think of something? Like, oh yeah, you know what else would work good together? Put it down in the comments and let us know. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm your buddy, Big John Ed G for Two Gun Pixel Presents. <laughs> Legendary Gaming and I am out of here.